Michael Show gibt. Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin, and today we have another episode from Mongolia. We are way out in the countryside of northern Mongolia on the wide open steppe, spending the day once again with a nomadic family, and we are going to start the day by producing the national drink of Mongolia known as Arak. And this is a fermented horse milk drink. So we're gonna be milking the horses, we're gonna be churning the milk, and we're gonna be tasting it for ourselves. Another dish we're going to be making is known as horhog, and this is something I've been looking forward to. We're gonna be using a full sheep to cook this with some super heated stones. You are not going to wanna to miss it, so make sure to stay tuned until the end to see us taste this delicious dish. Let's start the day by milking these horses behind me here. Okay. So they've began the milking process. They're kind of whistling and making noises to make the horses at ease because the female horses can be actually quite aggressive here. And it's a little bit dangerous, so we're trying to keep our distance and keep our voices down, let them get the milk. So the horses can only be milked during the summertime. So this drink is only produced during the summer. And you can see some of the horses actually have their legs tied. That's just to keep them here because normally the horses will be roaming very, very far away from the gear. And also some of them are more aggressive than others. So they've got them tied down a little bit extra. <laughs> So here at the Gur, they only have about 30 to 40 horses that are milking ready. So the family actually owns around 200 horses, but a lot of them are either too young or male. So they can only milk the mare, the females. Quite a lot of milk. Ah, English. Ah, what's this? That's huge. So we just brought the fresh mare's milk in and added it to a pot that they will continually add to all day long, all summer. They'll milk the horses about uh, every two hours and you can see he's just churning it, churning it and the whole family will take turns, the kids, the mother, the grandparents, everyone will take turns and it's slowly fermenting. It takes about one day to ferment but because we mixed some fresh stuff with the previously fermented stuff, it's already ready to drink so I think we're gonna try it out next. So right now I'm just churning it, trying to create lots of bubbles and foam get everything really stirred up in here. After you finish churning, you can actually stop and hear all of those bubbles and that uh, fermenting starting to happen, sort of just like hissing. There's a lot of milk in here. And no, no additives, just milk, churning, and time. <laughs> Thank you. So I have a full bowl of Eric and their little dog here, Jerry, is joining me. And check this out. This is the fermented horse milk. Let me try this out. Mm. Wow, it's very sour and carbonated. It reminds me of toddy in Sri Lanka, but with this really milky milkiness. 
it's got this interesting aftertaste too, like almost slightly sweet aftertaste. Mm. It tastes almost like lemon juice, it's so sour. When they hand you the bowl here in Mongolia, filled to the top, it's not meant to be finished. Just drink as you as much as you'd like, and then you can hand it back. Oh, there you go. And this gear that we're in is very cool too. You can see it's actually just grass on the floor here. This is just for a short time while they collect the hay, and then they'll move to a new location, as nomads do. All right, I'm gonna give this a try now. Ooh. Yeah, wow. Mm. Almost like a cheesy aftertaste. Mm. Interesting, not bad. So finish off with the Eric. They'll keep doing that, like I mentioned, all day long. We're gonna move on to our main course, which is the Horhog. <laughs> He's a tough little guy. Hey, would you quit it? That hurts. So the Horhog master is butchering the sheep that he just slaughtered. There's nothing around, only their livestock. So this is the only way they can do it. Anytime you're eating meat, just remember that this process also happens. You're just skipping that step. <laughs> So he's just about finished breaking down the full sheep. That was expert level, super fast. And he just used the sheep hide the whole time as a cutting board. So I think we're moving to the next step now. The next step is to start the fire in order to cook the horhog and also to heat the stones that will go inside and also help cook the horhog. So we're adding some salt into the pot here, just a little bit of water. The fire is burning underneath. Uh, the next step, I believe, is to add the meat. Actually, one more special ingredient. We're actually adding the Eric, that horse mare's milk that we collected this morning, fermented. So that's uh, the master's yeah. special ingredient for his horhog. It smells good. So he's grabbing some stones, the hot stones, and we're adding the meat and the stones, layering, and you can see that that is super heated, boiling that water, more stones. Oh man, this is gonna be really good. So all of that mutton meat is uh, cooking away. We're kind of containing it putting uh, rock by rock and you can see all that meat and that Eric is starting to kind of bubble up in there as well. We're starting to add some veggies. We just threw in some garlic. Things are moving fast. This is really cooking away. The smoke is coming out fast. Onions, meat. This looks really, really good. It smells incredible. Similar to the bodo that we had on the first day, but the difference here is that we're not cooking it within itself and we're using mutton instead of goat. Look at this, this is crazy. So all the vegetables have been added. We're just putting the last little bits, cabbage, potatoes, and I think we're gonna close this up. Those stones are really boiling things away there. Let's put the top on. 
Alright. That's gonna be good. You can see that pressure pushing it up too. So we've sealed the pod closed with some cloth and a little kind of stool makeshift weight to hold it down using this uh, tire rim here and that'll cook away for about an hour. You can hear it, it's really going in there. We are just waiting for the Khorhag to finish cooking, taking in the views of the beautiful Mongolian nature countryside. This sheep that we cook today will be used completely. So the hide is actually just here laying out to dry and they will sell that to a factory which will make it into clothes. The organs and the head will be eaten by the family this evening. We will be eating most of the meat now in the Horhog and then what's not eaten today will be frozen and given to family and friends. So literally everything. Oh, I also forgot the blood will be used for blood sausage. So there's no waste whatsoever. Makes you feel a little bit better. So the Horhog is finished cooking. It's time for the grand reveal. The whole gear smells incredible. So let's open this up. Okay. <laughs> 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 We're sitting down now, sitting with the Horhog Master, and we have a huge pot of mutton. You can see the stones are in here, some of the pieces are burnt, we've got a couple of the vegetables, but then we've also pulled out the cabbage and carrots, and we've got some side dishes, some pickles, and it's tradition here in Mongolia that uh, the head of the house uh, tastes first, so we'll let him try first. That is good. Good? Mm -hmm. All right, let me try this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so good. That's so smoky. The flavor is coming from those rocks. Just infusing mm -hmm. the smoky flavor. And very oily. The mutton isn't so strong. This one's a lot saltier than the bodo that we tried. Very, very good. You can taste all those vegetables too. Oh man, this is gonna be a feast. Very tender too. Mm. Good. The flavor is so much stronger than the bodok that we tried. I'm wondering if it's because of the eric that we put in. I think it might be a little bit. And these ribs have a ton of meat on them. They just fall off the bone. So good. Mm. Piece of cabbage and some carrot. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Everything is so oily. Just sitting around in the gyro having a feast. A whore hug feast. Thank you. 
So this is actually a big chunk of fat from the tail area and this area is so nutritious and uh, they actually give these to newborn babies to suck on instead of a pacifier and they can just suck the nutrients out and instead of plastic. So it's actually really good. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's really good. So the way of doing this is quite almost primitive. We're just cutting it off the bone with a knife, serving up different pieces, some fattier than others. And it is just so, so good. Look at this meat. It is so oily, so rich. Mm. 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 Meat lovers heaven here. Mm -hmm. oh. You gotta have one of these pickles too. These are so super good. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a tradition here to take the hot stones, which are still very hot even after eating, and kind of juggle them around in your hand. Very oily. <laughs> my face is covered in oil, I'm sure, and my hands are completely and sort of therapeutic because of the heat and the oil. Whew. Nice and hot. Yeah. Just washing everything down with a giant pickle and a little bit of bread goes really well and you can dip this into the oil a little bit. Heaven. You want a piece? <laughs> oh yeah. Is it good? How's the flavor? So how do you think it compares to the baldock? Honestly the flavor of the meat was a lot better. Really salty, really seasoned, super delicious. But. Bodog was delicious, but I think this trumps it. So best thing we've eaten so far in Mongolia? For sure. Yep. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Saying goodbyes? Yeah, saying bye. Back to my new pal. <laughs> Jerry? All he wants to do is bite me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. We just said our goodbyes to the family and the dog as well, and we're heading back to our gear. Wrap up the day. It was a great day, and what an experience that was. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it for today's episode. What another incredible day here in Mongolia. If you didn't check out the previous episode, hit the link down in the description box now, and you can watch us have the ultimate dairy day producing all kinds of Mongolian dishes using cow's milk. We even watched the women milk the cows, and at the end of the day, we went for a little horse ride, which was quite interesting and mm -hmm. a first for us. Yeah. What did you think of today? Today was an amazing experience yet again here. Every day has been an amazing experience. Watching that whole process from start to finish, super awesome. Yeah, thank you to Artger. You can check out their YouTube channel, and if you're coming to Mongolia, you can book a tour. Uh, they've helped us fix this entire experience here in Mongolia. Mongolia, so big thank you to them. Hit the link down in the description box for their stuff. Yep. And let us know, have you ever drank horse milk before? That was a first for us, mm -hmm. especially fermented horse milk yep. made into an alcohol, the Erig that we mm -hmm. had this morning. That was really interesting. Yep. And I'd probably say that Horhug was the best thing we've eaten in Mongolia yeah. and so I far. I have to agree with you. That was absolutely delicious. Even like the crispy pieces. Yep. Oh, amazing and flavored so well. Yeah. We have a couple more episodes from Mongolia coming, so make sure if you haven't already, hit the bell icon and subscribe. The bell icon will send you a notification when we post our video, otherwise you won't know when we upload and you may miss it and you won't want to miss it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on another episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.